Hey guys, this is Fadi from Harvey Productions and welcome to another video. In today's video, I will be discussing how I am using the Pro Tools hardware inserts with my interface with the Galaxy 32 or any of the Antelope interfaces, honestly, because the setup would be pretty much similar. Whether you have an Orion or a Galaxy, uh, the setup should be the same. If you don't know what Pro Tools hardware inserts is, it's basically a uh, a great feature that Pro Tools offer that allows me to connect any hardware units, any of my EQs, compressors, reverb, whatever hardware you want. And then you can plug that to the ins and the outs of the back of the interface. And then you can load that inside Pro Tools as an insert, literally as a plugin in your session. And then you can treat it as a plugin and then process audio through it. Pro Tools will automatically delay compensate and will run the round trip with no latency. It will take care of a lot of stuff for you. It's a great way for any of us who wanting to use hybrid setup for mixing, which for example, I mix in hybrid. So I use some plugins and some hardware inserts and I mix and match between both. Um, and if you have any hardware units in your setup, then you might as well also use it in mixing. Why not? Because they do sound better than the plugins. Anyways, so uh, let's jump in and uh, we'll go to this monitor here real quick. And then let's walk through how to set up properly. And then it should be a one-time setup. And once you set it up, you don't have to touch it again. Uh, so let's dig in. So the first thing we want to make sure that we have set up properly is the antelope routing. So, um, depending on what DAW, so this is gonna be specifically for Pro Tools, and I'm gonna make a different one for Logic, which is slightly a little bit different. But if you follow this protocol, uh, it should work on both. Pro Tools is a little finicky about the IO. They need to line up one-to-one. -one. If they are slightly offset it, then it doesn't work and it gets very, very confusing. And for that reason, and for the simplicity of mind and simplicity of the setup, the way that I set it up, um, I go one-to-one -one with hardware inserts and that way I don't have to worry about that problem. You guys will see here in my setup, the P9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, until 16, and then the ones at the bottom here. So these are the ones that I have assigned for my hardware inserts. So it's my patch bay 13, 14, 15, 16. And then, so in my line inputs, I got these. I also, in my DAW outputs, I got the same one same number and then down here you guys can see in my line outputs I got the same and then in my DAW inputs I got the same. So this is the first thing that you want to set up where I'm sending my DAW output to my line outputs and that goes somewhere to a unit so they I want to line them up so my DAW outputs these four and see if I select them they line up down here with my line output and then the same for my DAW input, line up with, here's the DAW input, and they line up at the top here with my line inputs. As long as I have these lined one-to-one, -one, then the process should be way simpler in Pro Tools. If you don't do it this way, it gets very, very complex. So this is all what I need right now. So these could be anything. Uh, right now I have them named P because I'm using a patch bay, but these could be for you um, let's say I have a uh, API here. So this channel and this channel will be API left, API right, SSL Fusion left, right, Pultec EQ, whatever you want. And you can actually even label it here, change the name so that way you know what hardware unit you have plugged in. And because the uh, Galaxy have 32 line inputs and 32 line outputs, you can obviously have up to 32 hardware, mono hardware inserts or 16 stereo hardware inserts. Now that we got that part simple, Good to go. Now let's go to Pro Tools. In Pro Tools, before you do anything, make sure you open, obviously your playback engine has to be the Galaxy. So here you go. Now after that, you need to go to your IO. And then the first thing, make sure your inputs, they line up the same as the inputs in your Galaxy, which in this case they line up. I even labeled certain things like, cause you can double click and label. So I labeled all my inputs. Make sure your outputs, they are the same as in your Galaxy as well, or any of you, your other antelope interfaces. And I also labeled them for my own sake. I even color coded them. It's one of the new Pro Tools updates. And then when you go to buses, just click default because then it will pull, here you go. 
it just repopulate the buses based on your inputs and your outputs properly so you guys can see it here and then the net the last thing you want to make sure that is set up correctly is inserts and then you'll see here i mean you i can have up to 64 inserts uh but in this case i'm only using so you want to look at these numbers and you, this is when you get to know which inserts are which so according to my galaxy I'm using channel 13, 14, 15, and 16. This means they are insert 13, 14, and 15, 16. This is stereo, or if you open it like this, they become two monos. And I will relabel those in, in here in just a second, but these are the inserts that I'm using. You can honestly, if you want, so not to confuse yourself, you can turn and activate all the other inserts. That way, when you are trying to select an insert in Pro Tools, it only shows you the active inserts that you have in your session. Okay, so we got this. All right, so let's try first with a stereo insert. I have here my drum bus. You guys can uh, hear the drums right here. Okay, so here's, here's my drums, all of these tracks and then I have them into a group folder, uh, an IO folder, routing folder, and then this is kind of like, works like my drum bus at this point. All right, and I have some, a bunch of plugins on this, compressor and EQ and stuff like that. Right now I want to use, instead of using this API, which is the one from UA, I'm going to inactivate this, and I'm going to put, I'm actually going to remove that altogether, no insert, and I'm going to put in here, and I go down to, uh, so let me zoom in. So you go to IO, and then I'm going to put insert, and you see path inactive. These are the ones that we inactivated, so you only have two active path. So I'm gonna put insert 13 and 14. In my case, 13 and 14 are hooked up to my patch bay 13 and 14, and I put the API in that patch bay. But if you don't have a patch bay, you don't need to. You can literally have the API plugged direct to the back of the uh, Galaxy or the Orion, whatever that you have, to channel 13 and 14 output goes to the compressor and back input to the Galaxy. Um, you can just create a round trip, basically, connection. Okay, so now that I connected this, you guys can see it right here, 13, 14, 13, 14. If I have everything hooked up properly and there is no uh, issues, I should immediately hear audio going through this channel. So this is now actually running through my API right here, my hardware API. And uh, show you guys the difference. I will. Uh, you can't bypass. You have to completely make inactive, which is this one. Which the shortcut for that one is Control Command, and then you press with the mouse click on it. That inactivates and activates like this. So um, right here, I'll show you guys. So here's with it on. So you can tell. Okay, this is. So this is at this point that API unit as a hardware insert, Pro Tools automatically compensated for the delay. I don't have any delay or latency issues. And the way that Pro Tools does this, from my understanding, when you put a hardware insert, it dedicates specific CPU resources to that one, because this audio actually is running out through converters, going out and coming back, being converted again. So it goes digital to D to A, digital to analog. It comes back analog to digital. But that normally creates a round trip latency, especially if I'm running a buffer size, a higher buffer size, which I'm running here the highest, 1024. But when you use hardware inserts, Pro Tools skips the buffer size section and then may, runs this at basically almost zero latency. And I don't have any problem with it at all. It just dedicates a little bit more CPU. You will start to notice the difference once you have 20 uh, hardware inserts in the unit. In the session, then you realize, okay, my computer is getting a little bit heavier because all of these hardware inserts are running at zero latency. Uh, now I can easily go to that insert right here and I can right click on it and I can just rename it. And um, it'll just 
you'll get this and I can just rename it API analog. So I know that this is not a plugin. This is my analog unit. Now I can, uh, you obviously can't use the same insert in multiple places because this is true analog routing. So this is on my drum bus. Let's say I wanted to use that insert just on the overheads. I can just grab it and put it right here on my overheads. So here's my overheads. Now I'm only processing the overheads without, you can tell the punch of the API. Um, okay, now how do you commit that? Obviously, once you have a hardware insert in your Pro Tool session, you cannot do any offline bouncing anymore. This is true analog processing. So uh, uh, there's several things. If you have a lot of them and you don't need to commit to any of it, then you're good. But let's say I only have one API 2500 and I love how it sounds on my overheads. I also love how it sounds on my snare and I love how it sounds on something else, my electric guitar, for example. So you can just put it here on the overhead like the way I did. And then I will go here to my overheads. And here's the overhead. Select it all. And you would right click on this. And then you would say commit up to this insert. Basically, you're committing the same way that you're committing any plugin. The only difference once I click commit here, you guys will see it will not do offline commit. It will have to be a real time commit. To see the offline is already grayed out. You can't even select it. If I select OK, it is basically committing at this point that overhead track in real time. And then um, another thing is that the way that these work, it literally works like a plugin on the insert chain of Pro Tools. You got 10 inserts and it will operate according to its order. So this is right now the last in chain for the overheads. But if I grab this and put it like at the top, now the API analog is the first and then the EQ and then the SSL channel strip that I have. So basically you'll be according to the order. So it's really in, in a simple way, it's treated just like a plugin. Now um, I'm gonna take this back, just put it over here, back again to the drum bus. Let's gonna grab um, a mono track, let's try to track the bass right here. So let's clear our solos, let's track the bass. Oh, that's actually a stereo track. Um, let's see a mono track that we have would be a vocal track. Okay, so here's the vocal. And then I'm going to do hardware inserts. You guys will see now the numbers are in monos. And you'll notice already the API one got labeled API. So I'm gonna use hardware insert 16. And I have this assigned to my Audioscape Pultec over there. So now this vocal, I'm gonna take off these reverbs. All of this ever, what is it worth? So that vocal right now is going, is being processed through my Poltec. I, I do this a lot where I, especially for sessions that I did not engineer and somebody sends me the session to mix, I will take like the vocal and I'll run it through my analog vocal chain the same way that I engineer. I would do like a Poltec EQ, and then I will do my uh, 1176 compressor, then I'll go to a 2A compressor, and then I'll use my Neve saturation, and then that's kind of how I would like to process it, and I do analog processing for all of it, commit that, and then I would start mixing. But I already have like my vocals to almost where I would like them to be before I even start mixing. And then again, same thing, you can right click, you can rename, I'm gonna call it Poltec Analog, you can call it whatever, if you right click on it and commit, same thing. You can also do the same thing for mix buses. So if I remove that API from here, because it won't let you do it twice, and I go to my mix bus, and then I just put the API right here. Here's the API analog. Now I have my API on the entire mix. Um, it's very simple. Uh, as long as you have your IO lined up properly in Galaxy or Analog, um, unit as well as in Pro Tools. Once you line everything up one-to-one, -one, then hardware inserts become an incredible feature and a game changer for people who are wanting to use hybrid mixing. Uh, I hope that video is helpful for you. If you have any question, make sure you put them in the comment. I'll try to answer as much as I can. But if you want more extensive help with your setup, I do consultation one-on-one. -on -one. 
where I can uh, access your computer remotely via Zoom and then I can help you with your setup and layouts and save it for you so that way you have your setup properly done and you don't have to worry about it again. Uh, if this video is helpful, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next video.